In 2003, on the island of Flores in Indonesia, something was discovered that was both surprising and mysterious. A previously undiscovered hominoid, related closely to modern humans. Termed at the time a hobbit, this species lived on Flores Island until modern humans arrived, sometime around 50,000 years ago. The problem with the find is that skeletons of Homo floresiensis are very sparse, with only nine individuals known and most evidence coming from a single find site located in a single cave. It's since been determined that Homo floresiensis was an early species of human, but a sister species of Homo habilis, as opposed to being examples of unusual modern humans. Just how long after the arrival of modern humans Homo floresiensis survived is hotly debated, but it has been advanced that it may still have been around as recently as 12,000 years ago. That's getting really recent for another hominoid other than Homo sapiens, but that's all based on limited paleontological evidence. So what of the evidence from anthropology? As it turns out, the people of Flores Island have stories about so-called ape men that were short and not quite human. These stories stand out a bit differently from the usual stories in anthropology that are often mystical in nature. Here we have people telling stories of a small, human-like creature living in the forest, along with fossil evidence that such a thing once did, and would have interacted in some way with the arrival of modern humans to the island. So are these stories remnants of events that happened tens of thousands of years ago, and maybe among the oldest preserved stories on planet Earth? Or it's also plausible that they may not be that old and Homo floresiensis survived far longer than we currently know. You have fallen into Event Horizon with John Michael Godier. In today's episode, John is joined by Gregory Forth. Gregory Forth received his doctorate at Oxford and was a professor of anthropology at the University of Alberta for more than three decades. He is a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada and is the author of more than 100 scholarly papers and several academic books. Between Ape and Human, an anthropologist on the trail of a hidden hominoid is his first book for a general audience. Remember to subscribe to Event Horizon so you never miss an episode. Professor Gregory Forth, welcome to the program. Oh, well, thank you very much. Now, Professor, you're an anthropologist and you have done work in an area of, the, uh, of Indonesia called Flores Island. Can you give us some background on the island and the peoples that, that live there? Yeah, um, well, the island is in eastern Indonesia, southeastern Indonesia. Um, it's, I think it's the 10th largest uh, of the many islands that make up uh, Indonesia. Um, it's around, uh, what, 400 kilometers long. Um, can't put that in, in miles just offhand, but uh, a fairly sizable island. It, it's, it's long and thin running from uh, west to east uh, and it's very um very mountainous uh, especially in, at, at the western and, and the uh the eastern central est eastern uh, e extremities uh so it, it's uh, it's difficult to uh to get around even with uh, with modern roads uh, it can take a while because those roads twist and turn uh, all over the place and sometimes they're out of commission so uh um, yeah, travel can be a bit, a uh, bit of a challenge. So you, you have, uh, uh, I, I mean, one, um, well, one result of that is that you have a number of separate uh, cultures, separate ethno-linguistic groups, uh, speaking uh, different uh, languages, um, and um, you know, different parts of the uh, island are uh, more or less uh, densely uh, populated as a result. Uh, traditionally, and, and to uh, um, a large degree still today, uh, people are cultivators. Um, they um, produce their own uh, produce their own food. Um, some fishing is done um, well, both in streams and rivers, uh, and and on the uh, uh, on the coast. Um, and um, yeah, no, some uh, some men engage in hunting. Uh, as 
as well. Um, yeah, it's what can one say? I mean, it's organized in much the same way as uh, um, a local societies that is organized in, in much the same way as they are elsewhere in uh, Indonesia. You don't have a lot of uh, local socio political complexity. Um, often, uh, the village or, or a, um, a small group of village will be, you know, the highest. Uh, kind of uh, social unity that uh, that one's, one gets. Um, what more do we need to say? Any particular questions about the environment or? Uh, no, just to get a lay of the land yeah, of uh, yeah. what this really well, is. You know, that, that zone is, is, is tropical. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, because of the, um, uh, the, the terrain, uh, varying terrain on, on Flores, uh, um, you get uh, uh, quite a bit of variation in terms of uh, rainfall and, and, uh, and climate, yeah, especially between um, north and south coasts and between coasts and uh, more interior um, areas. Um, most of the rainfalls... Uh, uh, during uh, the monsoon, which begins uh, in most places in, in October, and it can run till, uh, uh, until April, a bit later sometimes, but um, uh, yeah, not everywhere is uh, as wet as that might, uh, that might suggest. Uh, um, the, the wet season is shorter, in other words, in some places. Uh, on the other hand, in, in um, uh, regions where I, I worked, um, it uh, it can be pretty pretty lush, you know, in, in, in most parts of uh, of the year, um, especially the further you get away from the coast. Now, this island is also noteworthy in that it once hosted a uh, a hominoid, another mm -hmm. member of the human family. Um, a, a relative to us, Homo floresiensis. Give us a, a sort of background on that that species. Um, well, it um, yeah, it was quite a remarkable find. Actually, the find, uh, um, the discovery of uh, Homo floresiensis, the remains thereof, uh, goes back to uh, the second half of twenty o o three. The um, discovery wasn't announced uh, to anybody, really, until uh, late in, uh, in 2004, uh, over a year uh, later when you had um, uh, Nature and, and uh, other, other science journals uh, um, covering it. This was, um, I, I, um, it, it was remarkable because the... Um, the, the, the species, the, the, the hominin, was uh, very small-bodied. It, it stood only uh, uh, about uh, about three, um, about, uh, sorry, a meter tall. Um, that would be uh, a meter and a bit, would be the, the tallest specimen. That, that's something over, uh, over three feet. Um, and uh, it was an erect, uh, an erect standing uh, um, hominin uh, necessarily, uh, and uh, and you know it, it walked on uh, on two uh, two legs. Uh, anatomically, though, it, it was uh, um, and still is, in a sense, very um, very primitive uh, physically. Uh, the the Cranial capacity was about the size of a chimpanzee, it's around uh, 400 cubic centimeters. In fact, the um, the original estimate was a bit uh, a bit later, or, or a bit uh, lower, I should say, than that. the um, The brain was small, even in in proportion to the even in proportion to the the body. So, yeah, a question that immediately arose: Well, okay, you know, how did it think and uh, uh, and behave. Uh, there is no definite evidence with regard to tool making or, or tool uh, tool use, um, or, or indeed the, uh, the the use of fire. I mean, the, the, there there is evidence for uh, for tools that, that you know might have been uh, made by Floresiensis, but it, it's it's also possible that they were made by um, by modern uh, anatomically modern. Uh, uh, humans and, and likewise, um, you know, fire is not a, a definite uh, asset of these uh, of these hominins, uh, Homo 
Homo floresiensis. So uh, it's interesting, or well, a couple of things to say. Um, the, the, the first is that um, the uh, the original dates uh, suggested that uh, uh, these uh, creatures were extremely recent. I mean, maybe as recently as, as uh, 12,000 years ago. Um, uh, that that date has been put back somewhat, or at least the dating of, of the geological setting, um, to 50 or 60,000 years ago. But the thing to uh, stress there is that we're, we're dealing with a single site. Homo floresiensis uh, remains have only ever been found at, at, uh, at the one site. Um, whereas other evidence suggests that they must have been uh, elsewhere on uh, on on the island, uh, if not to, in all parts of uh, in all parts of Flores. So, so when exactly the species became uh, extinct, we um, well, <laughs> as is often the case in paleontology, we, we simply don't uh, we simply don't know, um, which leaves the possibility, of course, of far more recent. Uh, uh, survival. Now, that's where we get into the sort of interesting aspect of this, that it may have survived much, much more recently. Mm -hmm. And it also seems to coincide with certain folk tales that the people on the island uh, yeah. talk about an ape man. Give us an overview of the folk tales that they say. And why are they different? Why would they might they indicate that that Homo floresiensis might have survived into memory? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, I have to be a bit uh, fussy about the term folktale. Um, th there are tales, um, narratives, myths, uh, whatever you want to call them, that do feature these beings. There's not many of those. Um, what I, I was dealing with, for the most part, were uh, um, people telling me about uh, um, the, the ape men, as I call them. Laihoa is, is the local name in, in the Leo language. Um, they, they, they would, uh, and, and these are beings that are, are, um, are, are claimed still to be around in, in small, small numbers, but very small, uh, very uh, rare, I should say, but still uh, occasionally seen. So, um, yeah, and, and these come from just sort of descriptions of, of the ape men as uh, creatures that, that are around, just as they would describe any other uh, uh, animal that they they recognise is still existing or possibly existing in their in their landscape. Um, uh, th there have been a number of uh, um, uh, eyewitness encounters, uh, and I was particularly interested, of course, in uh, in recording uh, in recording those. And, and and what is so remarkable about just about anything you hear about. Um, um, the ape men is that uh, they are described as well, you know, as as existent creatures in, in a um, an entirely or almost entirely uh, naturalistic way, you know, depending on the uh, the informant, so that uh, they can easily be distinguished from uh, other things that local people uh, believe uh, exist in their forest, uh, like forest spirits of demons and and, uh, uh, and what have you uh, which are, are um, which are, are, are things are beings that um, yeah they say exist but that they, they can't uh, they can't be seen they're not normally uh, normally visible um, they, they can't be seen by um, at the least they can't be seen by uh, more than one person at a single time, whereas the, the ape men, they say, are, are not like that. Um, they are as visible as any other animal. They, they reproduce, they, they give birth and die, and, and they need to eat, and uh, um, that they can be killed. They're mortal, uh, like, like any other animal they're uh, familiar with, but uh, by the same token, uh, quite uh, different from um, spiritual, supernatural beings, which, uh, you know, which one can uh, um, uh, assume our uh, our supernatural, our uh, sorry, our imaginary. You know, the knowledge of these comes from a different source, from um, a, you know ordinary uh, experience of uh, of the world. So that, that's what struck me so much about them is the way you know local people describe them as uh, um, as natural species. They do uh, at the same time. Um, some people uh, particularly reckon that ape men have certain uh, 
uh, supernatural qualities, certain mystical uh, powers, uh, mostly to do harm, um, but also in, in the form of uh, uh, their bones and body uh, parts. Other body parts can be uh, used uh, for good or for, for, for good luck as, uh, as um, you know, protective uh, charms and so on by individuals who are uh, lucky enough to be able to uh, obtain uh, obtain these but then that that mystical supernatural aspect um, applies to uh, other uh, creatures uh, known to Flores Islanders which are, are recognized by um, by academic uh, academic science uh, scientists so things like uh, sea cows uh, even even monkeys um, and uh, and so on, so that there's there's nothing to distinguish uh, ape men from uh, other animals in those respects uh, either. Now, what do they tell us, uh, the people on the island? What do they tell us about the behavior of these ape men? Yeah, well, <laughs> not very much. As I said, they they're, they're rare. They live uh, in in uh, you know their home is in highland uh, forests where uh, human beings. Um, don't uh, don't normally uh, normally go. Uh, they talk about them, and this comes from both people who, you know, know only the the popular versions, the general versions of uh, of the story, as well as from eyewitnesses. They um, they're, they're mostly um, uh, vegetarian. That they they uh, eat mostly or entirely uh, plant plant foods. Um, at the same time, that there are uh, Stories about um, about eight men um, uh, stealing, um, well, certainly stealing crops, you know, like like corn or, or, or maize and and uh, and other uh, um, cultivated foods as well. But in addition to in addition to uh, those plants, um, they are uh, they they're said sometimes to steal uh, chickens. Um, for example, from uh, from field huts or, or, or from, uh, from, from from villages, and possibly even small pigs. Nobody's ever ever seen them do that. But this is a again, this is something that's attributed to uh, um, to, to the eight men. Uh, th there are other uh, uh, other thieves about uh, as well, animal thieves. Uh, um, so. Uh, by no means uh, are thefts attributed exclusively to uh, ape men, but this is one indication that they they do, or they might occasionally uh, consume um, consume animal foods. I, um, I there was one man in particular, a very interesting uh, old guy uh, who seemed to know a lot about uh, ape men. Um, he was difficult to follow sometimes, but he he reckoned that they they. Uh, would uh, catch and eat uh, frogs, um, which is something humans uh, on the island do, by the way, uh, and also that uh, they they um, they caught um, jungle fowl as a kind of uh, kind of wild bird, very much like uh, a domestic uh, chicken. Um, but on the whole, yeah, um, vegetarians, uh, it would. Uh, it would seem. I mean, but, uh, people who've seen uh, eight men have usually seen just uh, just one, sometimes uh, uh, two. But so you know what their social life might be like uh, is not clear. There's a, a general idea that um, that they live in uh, in caves, in you know highland uh, forested uh, areas. Um, so um, you know how, how, how otherwise do they behave? Well, uh, uh, as, as I said, they're, they're, they're supposed to uh, mate and, and give birth, and uh, you know do all those things that are um, that are uh, um, associated with natural animals. As I said, um, oh, I didn't say perhaps that um, they are reckon not to have any any culture. They they um, well, for one thing, that they're always. Uh, um, uh, described as uh, when they're when they're seen and otherwise uh, as not uh, carrying anything like like weapons or or, uh, or wearing uh, wearing clothes or having any uh, knowledge of uh, 
of fire. So yeah, to the extent that um, to the extent that that you know uh, um, stone tools and fire aren't definitely uh, associated with Homo floresiensis either. There's you know there's little to choose between the two between floresiensis and uh, ape men in these uh, in these respects. Now, in your book, Between Ape and Human, an anthropologist on the trail of a hidden hominoid, you advance that maybe somebody could go look for this, you know, go and see if this uh, species is still extant. What would you do? What would that look like if you wanted to go out and try and find an ape man in and solve the mystery? Yeah. Um, well, there's sort of two questions there, I, I guess. I mean, what one concerns... Uh, how likely it would be that that um, natural scientists, uh, field zoologists, uh, uh, for example, would want to uh, um, launch a, 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 a search. And, and in that regard, I, I um, a, a, as you may remember, I have quite a lot to say in the last chapter, chapter ten, about uh, you know the likelihood of that uh, sort of research um, taking place. Otherwise, I suppose, you know, private individuals, if they could get the necessary permissions and, and so on, uh, um, could, could could go and search. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it would require some sort of team effort with, with trained trained individuals. As I said, the, um, the, the, the landscape is, is pretty is pretty rough, pretty tough. Um, so, uh, yeah, anybody... Um, Anybody taking on that task would need to be uh, fit, and therefore one assumes uh, um, fairly fairly young. Also, it, it would. I mean, if, if one were to stand any chance at all uh, of su successfully finding uh, something, um, it, it would it would likely take a long uh, a long time. So uh, it would be no. Uh, no easy task, I, I shouldn't thought, think. Now, what is the situation on the island of the proliferation of the cell phone and thus cameras? Do, is yeah. it possible that confirmation could come that way? It, it's possible, but again, as I discussed, not uh, particularly uh, likely. Um, if anybody's going to see one and, and uh, try and take a picture of it, with a cell phone or, or otherwise, it, it would be a, a local uh, um, a local person. As, as I explain in the book, that there's I have no evidence that anybody has ever uh, uh, claimed that they they've been able to take a a, a picture of, of uh, such a thing. Um, and, and as I also pointed out, if they did, it, it's not particularly likely that they would. Uh, Keep it on their, their camera, or you know, uh, manage to uh, uh, ma manage to ensure that it, 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 the picture wasn't uh, lost. Um, you, you would need a good picture. Um, also, of course, if the picture was kept, it, it would have to be passed on to uh, someone uh, who could who, who you know took it seriously, didn't think this was a. Um, well, uh, some, somebody who, who thought that this, this was uh, uh, um, information, uh, a picture and, and so on, was, was worth reporting to somebody higher up and I guess ultimately um, scientific authorities of some sort. And uh, for reasons I explain, I, the, the, the likelihood of that happening is not, uh, is not, uh, not particularly good. Also, I mean, there are um, cell phones. Uh, um, the, um, the the quality uh, that's available on the island is not not especially uh, especially good. Um, the places in which one might encounter uh, um, uh, an ape man. Um, well, one thing to say there is that uh, um, people don't typically go out looking for these things. And they might come across one by uh, accident, but then in uh, circumstances where uh, it would probably be difficult to, to get a good shot uh, uh, in time of, uh, of the specimen. Now, how do the local people see the ape man? In other words, do they 
do they recognize it as something vaguely human or related, or do they just see it as as, a, a, as essentially a type of monkey? Yeah, um, it, that's a good question. They, they um, well, one thing to say perhaps is that uh, the only uh, non-human primate uh, on the island, uh, you know, recognized by science, uh, that um, uh, apart from ourselves, of course, Homo sapiens, uh, it is a, um, a species called the long-tailed macaque. This is a, a monkey that was introduced to the island all perhaps 4,000 years ago by um, by humans. They, they uh, describe these things as being quite different from... Uh, from monkeys, uh, um, the long-tailed macaques, as the uh, name suggests, have uh, very long tails. Uh, they're much smaller than the ape man is supposed to be, or quite a good bit smaller anyway. So there's, there's not, uh, um, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's not much likelihood of a consistent, really consistent, regular uh, confusion uh, between uh, the macaques and um and ape men. Um, they say they're not humans either. They're not humans like us. In fact, uh, ape men are classified in the local folk uh, folk taxonomy uh, as um, uh, the, a, a, as an animal, a kind of uh, a kind of a kind of animal. They, they speak of them as uh, uh, of uh, animals um, rather than uh, as humans. Um, I, there was one man in, in, uh, in particular who uh, uh, did uh, describe them as um, as, as uh, humans or, or, or something like a type of human uh, is a way you might uh, translate his words, but, but not humans like us, as he said. He was quite sure that there was something... Uh, something distinct. So um, this is where the uh, title of the book comes in between uh, ape, ape and human. They're, they're described as yeah, something like human beings. They stand erect, they, they walk on, on uh, uh, two legs uh, and so on, but uh, at the same time in certain uh, respects that they're somewhat hairy um, and they have uh, rather simian looking faces. Uh, in those respects that they, they are like they are monkey monkey-like, so they're uh, uh, between the two. Um, ape, by the way, is, is uh, um, I, I, I choose ape because, yeah, this is the way they, they describe them as being something between a, an ape and a human, but uh, they themselves make no distinction between um, monkeys and, and apes, which, which is a, a distinction you, you, you may be uh, aware of, and uh, well, you probably are, you know, from a, a zoological uh, um point of view uh so uh yeah if they say they look like anything ape-like they say they look like uh, monkeys in their facial features and uh, uh and, and and so on out of curiosity did you show any of the people that had claimed to see it did you show them a reconstruction a picture of a homo floresiensis um no and <laughs> i i would um I, I I would avoid uh, I, I would avoid uh, doing so. I um, that there was a, on, on one occasion um, in in the uh, local house I, I was staying in, um, the host uh, came across a, a picture I, I had. This was a a copy of the the Scouten uh, um, Schouten, um, painting. Uh, which came out very early after the discovery of uh, Floresiensis, and and he uh, he said that looked exactly like um, like a, like an ape man, like a lihoa. Uh, but um, this was somebody who hadn't who hadn't seen uh, uh, who, who never claimed to have seen a, a, a local ape man. So that that qualifies. Uh, his observation uh, somewhat, but um, no, I, I, you know, I, I don't have any evidence either that that uh, um, pictures of that sort uh, um, had well any local currency really that they were seen by people when uh, the, um, the the report uh, first uh, of Florisensis uh, first uh, first came out, and also I, I was fortunate. Uh, in being able to to hear about the uh, Leo ape men, the Laioa, um, before the uh, the discovery of of the remains, and therefore before the uh, of uh, Floresiensis, and therefore before the, um, the the reconstructions 
Um, yeah, that particular reconstruction was, was published, I think, in local papers, but at that time, we're going back nearly 20 years ago, very few people saw um, local papers. But, um, you know, um, whatever, I, I, the fact is I was fortunate to be able to, to record um, information about these uh, these hominoids uh, before the discovery of, uh, of Floresiensis. So, you know, th those those reports, that information uh, uh, couldn't possibly have been uh, influenced by the um, the finding of the uh, of the the remains, the fossilized remains. Now, in the local accounts, has there ever been anything about a confrontation? I mean, have the have the local people ever been annoyed or had problems with the ape man? Yeah. Um, okay, as I said, they they are uh, rumored to uh, steal from from fields and, and and so on, but that could actually be something else that's doing the uh, the, the stealing. Um, in one of the encounter uh, uh, reports that I uh, I analyze in, in some detail in in chapter seven. Um, this this was was an encounter by some twenty years ago by by three or more by three people two adults and, and a young uh, a young girl a child um, all, all three were uh, um, extremely uh, disturbed by what they uh, saw became uh, very very frightened and uh, the girl uh, who was about what seven or eight at the time maybe um, that evening fell fell ill. Which they attributed to this experience uh, with a high fever, and her uh, her hair began to uh, fall out. Um, they uh, they said that that seemed to be quite accurate that report because uh, um, other other villagers um, you know uh, w were witness to her uh, to her illness. Um, so yeah, they are uh, what well, they say. Uh, um, people generally say that eight men are. Uh, uh, they're afraid of ape men, and and that uh, ape men are are uh, usually afraid of us. So, um, you know, the, the the two don't. If they do uh, meet, they they don't uh, they don't stick around for um, for for very long. Um, and um, but that's really, I mean, they, they uh, yeah, they, they they do describe ape man as kind of creating a, a, a disturbance uh, being a bit of a nuisance even if uh, given, you know given that they may steal uh, crops but uh, um, on the whole not not really very threatening or or, uh, or, or harmful so um, uh, I, there is one account very old story um, second hand that came from uh, a man I know uh, concerning his his grandfather, who yeah, very early in the last century, apparently um, is, is said to have encountered uh, uh, two of the uh, creatures, and, and they um, they, uh, they they grabbed him and, and uh, pushed him uh, down a ledge. Um, thereby, he uh, sustained a, a, an injury, which he, he um, carried with him for the rest of his uh, the rest of his natural natural life so but but again they, they didn't uh, they, they didn't kill him they are said to be pretty strong especially for their uh, uh for their their size but but even so that they're, they're not you know they're not considered really dangerous like uh um well like komodo dragons for example or um, uh, some poisonous snakes that one finds on on the island or or even uh uh, a very large-bodied uh, rat, which I talk about a little bit in the introduction to the book, which uh, lives in trees and it can do a lot of harm if it falls on a person, that that sort of thing. Now, there's a picture of that in the book. and is, uh, yeah. Yes, that, that's the largest rat I've ever seen, and I, I would definitely not want to um, come into contact with one. Now, how often does that happen? I mean, with the rats, you know, how often does, does it, do they run into them on the island? Um, the rats are quite, um, quite common. Um, if you look up the red list, you, you'll find that they're, uh, they're classified as, uh, as a threatened species, but I, I think that's probably inaccurate because, um, uh, well, Nage people in, in central Florida, for example, uh, um, Leo as well, 
um, and others besides hunt them, you know, on, on a pretty, pretty regular, uh, pretty regular basis. Um, and um, I mean, to get that, uh, <laughs> I, I had some problem getting a shot of a, uh, it's called a Flores giant rat. I had some problem getting a shot of one, photo of one. Um, not because they're, they're rare so much as, as because, you know, when they are uh, uh, killed, um, hunted, they're uh, quite quickly cut up and, and consumed. Um, but on, on this particular occasion, I needed, a, um, I needed a shot for another book, actually, a book on animal metaphors. And um, so, so I, uh, I asked uh, some hunters to, to get me one, and, and uh, they knew exactly where to go. And, you know, the following morning, uh, there it was. So I, I was able to take a lot of pictures of it, uh, both, you know, the animal whole, although dead, of course, uh, and uh, of them butchering it in various uh, internal organs and, uh, and so on. But it's, it's obviously... Uh, you know, a pussycat's nightmare, that, that, that rat, because it, uh, with the tail, it, it's, you know, it's got nearly three feet long, uh, good two and a half feet anyway, so, uh, and, uh, yeah, as I said, a, a vicious animal. Now, um, that, that's got to be a contender for the world's largest rat species, I would imagine. Well, um, yeah, that's right, and it's found only on Flores, um, by the way, it's endemic to Flores Island. Now, that's what leads into my next question. Is there any evidence of um, Floresiensis on any of the other islands in Indonesia, or does it seem to simply have been indigenous only to Flores Island? It hasn't been um, identified for, for any other island by paleontologists, and, and indeed, um, as I said, the um, the, 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 the find on, on Flores that relate to a, a single um, a single site, a single cave, but, but that doesn't mean uh, that um, you know that, that they didn't uh, uh, or perhaps they don't still um, occupy uh, other other islands. In, in the book I, um, I, I in chapter eight I, I give accounts that I was able to record of, of sightings of things that sounded you know, much like um, the eight men of, of, of Leo, um, in, uh, well, first of all, in the Nage region, in central Flores, where local hominoids uh, are said to have existed, but, you know, to be long extinct, um, but also on um, on the, the uh, first big island to the, to the west, Sumbawa, um, where I, I have a report from a fellow anthropologist, actually, who... Um, um, was doing field work in the um, in the early early eighties and um, came across in not not in ideal uh, circumstances but came across um, what he described as um, bipedal um, and apparently tailless uh, uh, monkeys apes or yeah hominoids let's uh, just stick with that term that that stood about a meter tall and. Uh, uh, and so on. You saw a number of them uh, together. Um, but um, that's, as I said, that is for another island, uh, the island of Sumbawa. So what that was all about, uh, again, is another mis mystery. Now, you mentioned that on the island that there are different ethnic groups that speak different languages. Mm -hmm. Do the different groups that do they all tell stories to the ape man and do they all sort of um, corroborate each other? Um, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. I, I mean, in all cases, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, a small, uh, upright standing, uh, hairy bodied, um, human like, uh, being, um, where you get differences is, but they differ somewhat in, in, in terms of uh, size, it seems, but none of them are big. They are small, so it's a question of how, how small they are or were. Um, what's distinctive about the Leo ape men is, is that um, they are reckoned uh, uh, 
uh, to to survive, to, to still be around. And, um, you know, it's claimed that the people do still occasionally uh, see them and, and, you know, they describe them in this naturalistic uh, uh, kind of uh, way that I mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier. Whereas elsewhere... Um, you know, they're talking about more or less what sounds like more or less the same thing, but that they're uh, they're said to be uh, uh, to to have died out uh, hundreds of years back. There are died, other cases, yeah, I died say, out hundreds of years back. Yeah, there are other cases where where um, uh, people speak of something um, something that that's still around, um, but I, I've I've never. Um, Never been able to get many uh, convincing, compelling uh, reports of those uh, um, uh, of those creatures. So again, you know, Leo, the Leo region, uh, um, and and Leo people, and, and, and their um, their descriptions uh, really do uh, stand out as something special. Now, if this is the case, and it is Homo floresiensis, and Ooh. it still exists. Then we are no longer the last rena- remaining <laughs> hominid, I guess. Um, how closely related is it to us? You know, is this closer to an Australopithecine, or is it closer to us? Um, very good question. Let me uh, just just say that uh, there is a possibility that um, that that the the ape men are, are real, uh, and that they are. Um, they are hominins, um, even perhaps uh, members of, of the genus uh, Homo, but they're not they're not Homo floresiensis. They could be some sort of uh, cousin species because there have been hominins on that island for uh, it would seem for, for uh, yeah maybe a million years, even so, uh, which is a long time. Which is another thing that makes the place so uh, so special, you know. Besides Komodo dragons and giant rats and all the rest of it. But um, how similar are they to us? When um, when, when the, the um, remains um, were, were first uh, discovered in Western Flores, um, a, a leading member, uh, a leading Australian member of the um, uh, of the team, the Discovery team, uh, reckoned that this wasn't a member of the, the Homo, so it wasn't. Um, it wasn't Homo erectus. It wasn't, uh, um, or a type of erectus. It wasn't um, certainly wasn't uh, Homo um, Homo sapiens. Uh, and a name he suggested was, was Sundanthropus, which, which would have, you know, uh, put it uh, uh, with a number of um, far more ape-like uh, beings, including the Australopithecines, which. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's reckoned that that uh, we go back to the Australopithecine, so you know, some uh, Australopithe- Australopithecine or other was the answer of uh, the ancestor of um, Homo um, uh, uh, Homo sapiens and, uh, and other Homo as well. It, it is, in many respects, uh, or a number of respects, um, much more like uh, um, Australopithecines that than than modern. Modern homo, modern modern human. Um, if if we look at features like um, the shoulders, uh, the, um, the the limbs, the wrists, um, and and of course the, the 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 brain size, the cranial capacity. We're, we're talking about um, um, features that that resemble those of great apes. Like chimpanzees or, or other apes, like gibbons, more than you know, they resemble uh, modern humans. So, so for Asiensis, just to speak of that, um, uh, that that entity really is a, a, an extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary creature. And of course, you know, it it, uh, it, it, it survived. We know for certain it survived to a, a time when there were modern humans uh, walking the uh, walking the earth. So. Um, it was an important case for this idea, which is now pretty well established. I think that, that the the human family tree is is not a kind of a single trunk, as it were, with the odd branch going off here and there. But it, but it is a bushy uh, um, a bushy plant indeed. So you have a number of uh, number of branches uh, developing and and continuing uh, 
uh, at the same at, at the same time. And we certainly know that was the case in uh, in Africa uh, a long time ago. But um, n- now, you know, we, we've got evidence of that from um, of something similar from Southeast uh, Southeast Asia. So it really, yeah, a terrific impact. Now, now of course, you've got somebody uh, that comes along, i.e. me, and uh, presents uh, evidence, not bones, but uh, another sort of evidence which suggests that um, that uh, uh, something like Floresiensis could have survived on, on the island until uh, far, far more, more, more recently and might, might even, you know, uh, survive to, to the present. Now, one thing that we know about Floresiensis is that the remains were found in a cave, a single cave, suggesting yeah. that they have a connection to caves. So wouldn't it be logical that to start looking at known caves on the island for mm-hmm. any evidence? Um, yes, yes. Yeah, for, for, well, uh, for evidence, uh, more evidence of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Homo uh, floresiensis uh, as well. Although I believe... Um, uh, the the uh, discovery site what was a large cave, a large rock shelter, um, and, and I, I think it's the case that some of the remains, at any rate, uh, found there could could have um, could have washed in uh, by way of ancient uh, streams uh, and the uh, and the like. So it's not clear that. Uh, the, the, the creatures that lived in the, the caves. I think there's is it 13 or 14 different specimens um, dating to, you know, over over, uh, um, uh, over tens of, of, of thousands of, of years. It, it's not suggested all of those actually lived and, and died in the, in the um, inside this, this cave or, or rock shelter. Um, they have, could have had a different, uh, you know, a different uh, derivation. But even so, it's... Uh, yeah, it, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, um, remains of, of hominins have been found in in caves and, and caves and rock shelters and the like are, are pretty obvious places for, uh, um, uh, for, for for hominins to 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 take cover, to, to live, sleep, and uh, uh, and um, add all the rest of it. At the same time, if if you're going to live in a cave or spend any time in a cave, it um, it helps to have uh, fire. Um, for one thing, to get rid of uh, uh, dangerous creatures, uh, non-human creatures that may uh, inhabit uh, I- I- inhabit uh, caves. But um, no, there's probably other. and that that's the reason a uh, reason usually given why you don't find uh, um, monkeys or apes um, living in uh, I- I- in caves. But I dare say something slightly more intelligent could find a way of. Uh, you know, clearing a cave out of uh, snakes, pythons, or, you know, whatever it might be that uh, could uh, pose a threat before starting to use uh, the place regularly as as a kind of of dwelling. And we are out of time. Everybody should check out Professor Forth's book, Between Ape and Human, an Anthropologist on the Trail of a Hidden Hominid. Thanks for joining us today, Professor. And well, I, I, I certainly hope that somebody finds this. This would be <laughs> amazing. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it could happen. There have been greater surprises. Well, maybe not greater surprises, but similar surprises in the past. And many thanks for your interest in the book. Anna, why is the possum packing for another expedition? And why is he packing my clothes? We're going on an outing, John. To Flora's Island to make contact with Homo floresiensis. Yeah, why why is he also packing a huge bottle of barbecue sauce? You'll have work to do when we get to the island. Yeah, all right. He's writing out a large sign that says, hi. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. He's going to try to get me to hold that up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bait to try to make contact with the ape man. Covered in barbecue sauce. One week later. Well, this island sure is nice, Anna. Birds singing, angry rats in the trees, Homo floresiensis uh, footprints. It's it. Look, someone's running through the forest. 
Yeah, there's a plane crashed on the beach. Wait, wait a minute. Was that a polar bear? It was John. Yes. There it is, Anna. Homo floresiensis, another living hominoid on Earth. Isn't it magnificent? Wait, wait a minute. Why is it wearing a business suit? I don't know. I don't know, John. Excuse me, sir. You're not supposed to be here. This is for you. But wait a minute. He served me a lawsuit. More money down the drain, getting sued by another hominid. Event Horizon and my channel are now available as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube memberships. Early ad-free episodes, bonus episodes, and sleep-focused content. Sign up now by clicking the links below to your platform of choice.